Welcome back to English 4.0, the radio show. Let's go! Intermediate. Welcome back, ladies and gentlemen. Welcome back to Class 21. Here we are in the intermediate portion of the program. And we'll be starting with a little review. Do you know how to... We'll be talking about this structure. Do you know how to speak English? Sure you do. Do you know how to speak Spanish? Yes, of course I do. Do you know how to speak Spanish? Of course I do. Do you know how to read? Yes, of course I do. Do you know how to? How? Como los indios in the, in the movies, in the Western. How? With your hand in the air. How? How? To know how to. Do you know how to bake pies? Yes, I know how to bake pies. Do you know how to play the piano? Yes, I know how to play the piano. Really? Do you know, do you know how to play the piano? Because I don't. I don't know how to play the piano. Did you know how to... Really? Do, do you know how to play the piano? You do? Okay. Did you know how to play the piano when you were five years old? No, I didn't know how to play the piano when I was five years old. Do you know how to r drive a race car, like Fernando Alonso, a race car? Do you know how to drive a race car? No, no, I don't know how to drive a race car. I know how to drive a car, but I suppose I could probably try, but I d I'm not sure. I don't think I know how to drive a race car. Do you know how to drive a motorcycle? Do you? Ask me if I know how to drive a motorcycle. Kyle, do you know how to drive a motorcycle? Do you know how to? Do you know how to drive a motorcycle? No, I don't know how to drive a motorcycle. I tried once, and it was not good. I'll tell you, I, I rented a motorcycle once when I was in Thailand. This is, this is a true story. I rented a motorcycle, and in Thailand, they're not too concerned about rules or laws. You know, if, if, you, have, uh, if you have 20 euros, no problem. You've got yourself a motorcycle for the day. They don't worry about licenses and things like that. So... I, I rented a motorcycle, and they didn't ask me if I knew how to drive it. They just said, you know, take it. So I almost killed myself in the, within the first hour, so I returned it because I said to myself, I don't know how to drive a motorcycle, so don't try to drive a motorcycle if you don't know how to drive it, okay? Do you know how to speak Chinese? Do you know how to? Do you? Now, no, notice how I'm not, I'm not saying, do you know? I'm saying, I'm running the sounds together. Do you know how to? Do you know how to? Do you know how to? Do you know how to speak Chinese? Do you know how to drive a motorcycle? Do you know how to drive a race car? Do you know how to? I'm I'm running the sounds together. Do you know how to? Do you know how to speak Chinese? No, I don't know how to speak Chinese. Do you know how to speak German? No, I don't know how to speak German. Do you know how to make a paella? Yes, I know how to make a paella. Do you know how to play tennis? Yes, I know how to play tennis. Ask me if I knew how to speak Spanish before I came to Spain. Kyle, did you know how to speak Spanish before you came to Spain? No. No, I didn't know how to speak Spanish before I came to Spain. I learned when I was here. Ask me if I know how to play poker. Do you know how to play poker? Yes, I do. I know how to play poker, but I don't know how to play moose. I've tried to learn a few times, but it's it's a complicated game. I would like to learn, though. I'll have to sit down with some Spanish people who are experts at playing moose and have them teach me. Mm -hmm. Do you know how to use a computer? Yes, I know how to use a computer. Ask me if I know how to use a computer. Kyle, do you know how to use a computer? Yes, I do. Ask me if I know how to program a computer. Do you know how to program a computer? No, I don't. I don't know how to program a computer. I know how to use a computer, but I don't know how to program it. Ask me if I know how to make dresses. The verb to sew, coser, to sew. You have to be able to sew if you want to make dresses. Ask me if I know how to make dresses. Kyle, do you know how to make dresses? No, I don't. Definitely not. Do you know how to make dresses? Do you know how to? How to? Very important. Do you know how to? La idea aquí es, es machacar cada, cada idea. 
cada concepto gramatical, ¿vale? ¿vale? Estamos practicando to know how to, to know how to. Do you know how to use this structure properly? Yes, I know how to use this structure properly. I was talking about sewing. I don't know how to make dresses, but I do know how to sew a button. I know how to sew on a button. Yes, but I don't know how to make dresses. Do you know how to speak ten languages? It's almost like saying, can you? Puedes? Can you speak ten languages? Do you know how to? Do you know how to speak ten languages? No. I don't know how to speak ten languages. Um, did Pope John Paul II know how to speak ten languages? Yes, he did. He knew how to speak ten languages. I can't remember exactly how many, but he knew how to speak many, many languages. Do you know how to drive to Aranjuez? Do you? Yes, I know how to drive to Aranjuez. You can go there and enjoy the, the, the strawberries. You can take the, um, the strawberry train in Aranjuez. I recommend it. It's very nice. Let's talk about something different here. Let's move on to some phrasal verbs. Everybody loves phrasal verbs, right? Everybody's favorite? Is it, is it your favorite topic or your least favorite topic? Well, let's talk about phrasal verbs. One phrasal verb. One phrasal verb, which is to pick up. Pick up, a, pick up the pen. Coge el boli. Tell me to pick up the pen. Kyle, pick up the pen. Sorry, what do, what do you want me to do? I want you to pick up the pen. Okay, all right, I'm picking up the pen. Tell me to pick up the stapler. I have a stapler here. It's blue. Tell me to pick up the stapler. Pick up the stapler. All right. So I'm sorry, what do you want me to do? I want you to pick up the stapler. All right, all right, I'm picking up the stapler. What am I doing? I'm picking up the stapler. So now I have the pen in one hand and I have the stapler in the other. Let me see. What else do I have? I have um hmm I have an air conditioner remote control. Mando. It's a remote control for an air conditioner. It gets a little bit hot in this studio, and I have an air conditioner, but I I don't turn it on because it makes too much noise. It makes a kind of sound, and I don't like that sound. So I keep it off, but I have it on the table. Tell me to pick it up. The remote control. Kyle, pick up the remote control. Pick up the remote control. All right. What do you want me to do? I want you to pick up the remote control. Okay, okay, I'm picking it up. What am I doing? I'm picking it up. Okay. Now I'm going to do the opposite. I'm going to put down the remote control. I'm putting it down. I'm returning it to the table. I'm putting it down. I, I also have the... I still have the pen and the um, the stapler in my hands. So I'm going to put down the stapler. I'm putting down the stapler. I'm putting down the pen. Oh, I'm picking the pen up again, everybody. I'm picking the pen up. I'm picking up the pen. This is a separable phrasal verb. I'm picking the pen up. I'm picking up the pen. I'm picking up the pen. I'm picking the pen up. We can say it either way because it's a separable phrasal verb. We can separate the verb and the partis- and the and the particle, typically the preposition, and we can slide that object inside. I'm picking the pen up. When we have these separable phrasal verbs, ladies and gentlemen, when we use a pronoun like it, we almost always separate. So if I, I have this separable phrasal verb, in this case, um, to pick up, pick the pen up, pick up the pen. I can say it either way, but when we use the preposition, I mean, excuse me, the pronoun, it, in that case, I will say pick it up. I would never say pick up it. You cannot do that. Wrong. You have to say pick it up. Okay, I'm looking at the pen. I want to pick it up. I really want to pick it up. Tell me to pick it up. Kyle, pick it up. All right, I'm picking it up. I'm picking up the pen. I'm picking it up. Now I'm putting it down again. Okay? Tell me to pick up my notepad. Kyle, pick up your notepad. I'm excuse me. What I'm sorry. I have a problem with my ears sometimes. What do you what did you say? What do you want me to do? I want you to pick up your notepad. All right, okay, I'm picking up my notepad. I'm picking up my notepad. Now I'm putting it down again. I'm putting it back down. I'm putting it down again. I'm putting it back down, okay? 
Did you pick me up at the airport last week? No, I didn't pick you up at the airport last week. Did you pick up your brother at the airport last week? No, I didn't pick up my brother at the airport last week. Hmm. Okay. Ask me if I've ever, if I've ever picked anyone up at the airport. Have you ever picked anyone up at the airport? ¿Has alguna vez? Have you ever? Have you ever picked anyone up at the airport? Yes, I've picked up plenty of people at the airport. Sure. Word of the day. Word of the day. That's right, folks. It's time now for our word of the day. The word of the day is fiancé. This is a word that we have stolen from French. Sometimes we do that. In, in English, we, we often respect a language that we we borrow a word from and we continue to use it in that language but a fiance this is interesting this is um prometido or prometida prometido prometida fiance f i a n c e fiance fiance with that nice french sound to it but it's interesting it gives me the opportunity to discuss some other words related to this process of getting married because I'm a sing I'm I'm single I don't have a girlfriend or anything at the moment so if 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 I get a girlfriend una novia then I have well a girlfriend we have girlfriend and boyfriend I would have a girlfriend I would be her boyfriend then if we get if we get engaged if we get engaged if we decide to get married then she would become my fiancé. I would become her fiancé. Fiancé. Okay? And until the wedding day. Okay? So we, we, we say, for masculine or feminine, we say fiancé. Then on the wedding day, during, this, during the wedding service, we have, in Spanish, you, you, you say again, novia, novio, but we say the bride... And groom, bride, la novia, on the during the during the wedding on the wedding day, the bride, like we have the song here comes the bride, do 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 do. I'm anyway. Here comes comes the bride, because it's the bride coming down the aisle, the bride, and the and the male version is the groom, groom on the wedding day. Okay, the bride and the groom, then. After the wedding day, they become husband and wife. So, boyfriend, girlfriend, fiancé and fiancé, bride and groom, husband and wife. Got it? Did you get all that? I hope so, because we're going to move on. We're going to move on to talk about the past. That's right. We're going to, I guess it's like we're going back here, because we're going to talk about the past. Yes, the past with the verb to go. Okay, today I go, yesterday I went. Every day I go, yesterday I went, went, went. Did you go to the store yesterday? Give me an affirmative answer. Yes, I went to the store yesterday. Did you go to the bank yesterday? Yes, I went to the bank yesterday. Did you go to the stadium yesterday? En voz alta, give me a loud answer. Give me a, an answer out loud, en voz alta. Yes, I went to the stadium yesterday. Did you go to the bar with your friends last weekend? Yes, I went to the bar with my friends last weekend. Did you go to the concert last week? Yes, I went to the concert last week. Went, went. I went, you went, he went. Did your brother go to the concert? Yes, he did. Yes, he went to the concert. Did your mother go? Yes, she went to the concert too. También, she went too. I went and she went, my mother went, my brother went, my father went, we all went. Everyone went to the concert. Did you go to the Real Madrid match? Yes, I went to the Real Madrid match. Did your brother go? Yes, he did. Alberto went to the Real Madrid match a few days ago. Yes, he did. He went to the match. Did you go to the barber shop? Yes, I went to the barber shop. Now let's go with some negative answers. Negative. Answer me out loud. En voz alta. Did you go to the Beijing Olympics? The Olympics, los Juegos Olímpicos, in Beijing, in China? No, I didn't go to the Beijing Olympics. Did you go to the Seville Fair in 1992? 
No, I didn't go to the Seville Fair in 1992. Did you go to Mongolia last year? No, I didn't go to Mongolia last year. Did you go to Bruce Springsteen's last concert in Madrid? No, I didn't go to Bruce Springsteen's last concert in Madrid. Very good. Vocabulary of the day. All right, yes, it's time for the vocabulary of the day. Multitud. Muchedumbre. Crowd. Crowd. Barato. Economical. We can also say cheap. Cheap. But cheap has the connotations of being possibly low quality, whereas economical is just, oh, you found a good, a good bargain. Una ganga. Vaya ganga. What a bargain. What a bargain. You found an economically priced book or thing. Well done. Desvestirse. Desvestirse. To get undressed. Mm. Día festivo. Holiday. Holiday. No tiene sentido. It doesn't make sense. No tiene sentido. Make. It doesn't make sense. Please do not say it doesn't have sense. We say it doesn't make sense. No tiene sentido. It doesn't make sense. All right, let's talk about the verb... Well, the structure, to be born. We use the verb to be, but to be born. Nacer, to be born. Ask me if I was born in Spain. Were you born in Spain? No, I wasn't. I wasn't born in Spain. So, to be born. I was bo- I w- ask me where I was born. Where were you born? Repeat. Where were you born? Where were you born? I was born in Canada. Ask me if I was born in Toronto. Were you born in Toronto? No, I wasn't. Canada has ten provinces. Ask me which province I was born in. Which province were you born in? I was born in Nova Scotia. The capital city is called Halifax. Ask me if I was born in Halifax. Were you born in Halifax? No, I wasn't. Ask me which town I was born in. Which town were you born in? I was born in a small town called Digby. I was born in Digby, yes. Ask me if I was born in the... Well, ask me if I was born in the valley or on the mountain. Were you born in the valley or on the mountain? I was born in the valley. Ask me if I was born in the valley hospital. Were you born in the valley hospital? No, I wasn't. Ask me which hospital I was born in. Which hospital were you born in, Kyle? Which hospital were you born in? I was born in the Digby General Hospital. Ask me if I was born on the first floor. Were you born on the first floor? No, I wasn't. Ask me which floor I was born on. Which floor were you born on? I was born on the third floor. Ask me if I was born in room 301. Were you born in room 301? 301. 301. No, I wasn't. Ask me which room I was born in. Which room were you born in? I was born in room 305. There you go. True story. To be born. To be born, folks. We're all out of time, but we'll be back tomorrow. But stick around for the advanced class. But I'll be back for more intermediate tomorrow. Same time, same place. My name is Kyle. Take care. See you soon. Bye-bye. Bye-bye.